Hello everyone, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. So in this particular video, we will talk about a very interesting implementation about the Titanic survival prediction. I hope that uh, you know this data set you already are aware of. At one point of time, we definitely have used this data as well because this is quite famous data, right? So we have been given a number of features on the basis of that the the problem statement is that we need to determine that whether a person will survive or not. That's a simple classification problem where we will be having either zero, which indicates that the person will not survive, and one which indicates that the person will survive. Now, usually you will see that this implementation people usually do via you know uh, machine learning classification algorithms and we do have a lot of uh, you know classification algorithms right but in today's video my objective is not to talk about you know machine learning classification algorithms and doing the implementation via that today we will try to talk about how basically using tensorflow and inside that tensorflow uh, you know tf learn which is a you know deep learning library which is built on top of TensorFlow only. So this is a deep learning library, which is basically built on top of this TensorFlow only. So I'll try to demonstrate you the complete end-to-end -end implementation. But before that, let's try to understand that what is the approach that we will follow in order to do the implementation of the same. So the very first thing I hope everyone knows that first of all, we have to load the data. So th this is what we will do also. We will try to load the data set that we have. Once we will be able to load the data set, we need to obviously pre-process that data. What is the meaning of pre-processing? I hope everyone knows that, for example, uh, in the given data, if you will be having some, uh, you know, a categorical feature, we need to convert that into a numerical data right because we all know that whenever we train our deep deep learning neural network that only understand the numeric values or maybe we need to you know remove the columns which are not likely to use to predict the survival rate of any person so these things we will try to cover up in the pre process part the third important step is after doing the complete pre processing of a data set we will try to you know build the uh, I would say neural network classifier, right? We will try to build the neural network classifier. Once that is done, the next step is to do the model training because now our classifier is ready. We need to train that classifier on top of our data that we have. And that is what we will do as our fourth step. And the very last step is to, you know, uh, do the predictions of our model that we are getting. So we'll try to do a model predictions. These are the five steps that we will follow step by step. We'll try to do one by one every step and then I'll tick mark each and everything. So let's get started with the implementation part. Uh, so let me show you. So first of all, we will connect this collab file. And I would recommend that you will just try to use the GPU as the runtime type. It will be really helpful when we will try to train our model. Okay. Now, here what we will try to do first of all, because tflearn is a library which we need to first of all install, right? So we will install that. Now, whatsoever be the important packages which I believe is required in order to, you know, do the further implementation. I'm just trying to import those. So here, basically, we are trying to import all the required libraries, namely NumPy and Pandas and tflearn, which we directly, which we just, just now we have installed. Now, once it is done, we need to download the data set. So in tflearn, there are a lot, many data sets that we have. From all those data sets, what, what we need to import is the Titanic data set. So what we are saying, download the data set. The, the file name is titanicdataset.csv. So this is done. So if we'll just say print the data set. So here we will be able to get the CSV file. Now, suppose I want to read the content inside that CSV file. 
So what I will say, I will say read underscore CSV. So we will be able to get a data frame. And if I'll just say dot head, you will be easily able to get that in the head, obviously we will be able to get the topmost five records starting from survived, P class, name, sex, until the fair column. So all these are the columns that we have. Now, what we want to predict, we want to predict this survived thing, right? So either the value will be zero or it will be one. So if we will just try to see the shape of our data means how many number of rows in the columns that we have. So we can see that almost 1300 number of rows that we have and nine number of columns that we have. So if you'll just try to see the column names. So these are the columns names that well, column names that we have. Now we need to load this particular CSV file. Now to load that CSV file, we need to again import the function load underscore CSV. When we are calling this function, I'll just put on the cursor here. Try to see what parameters we are passing here. Target column is something which is the index number of which particular target you are approaching towards. Here, if you know, we are trying to find out the predictions of a survived thing, which is present at the zeroth index. So target column is zero as of now. After that, we will be having a categorical labels. So it will contain a bool value, boolean value, either it is true or false. True means that label returned as a binary vectors, which is so true because here we want to predict a label as either 0 or 1. So how many number of classes do we have? Two classes, 0 or 1. So in this way, we will be able to get a comp out of this complete data set that, that CSV file we have. We are loading that and inside that we are defining our target column, which is at 0th index. We are defining the categorical labels as true and the number of classes as two. So now if you will see, we will be able to get a data and the labels separately. Labels contain two classes, either it will be zero or one. Now we need to do the pre-processing. In pre-processing phase, so until so far, step number one is done, where we are trying to load our data. So if I'll just try to show you, uh, this part is done. I would say this part is done. Loading the data set is done. Now the second important part here is to, you know, pre-process that second step. Here, if you will see what we are trying to do, we are trying to discard few columns. Why? Because we are assuming here that those particular columns are not that much usable to predict that whether a person will survive. Again, this is my assumption. What I'm saying that out of a given data, the column number one, index number one and index number six, both of these two columns are not that much usable for me. So what I will do here, what is column number one? If you will see here in data, uh, because we have just, you know, uh, taken the survive column outside. At first index, we will be having a column and at the sixth index, we will be having a ticket. Now, it's very simple to understand here that when I'm saying, you know, name, do you think it really matters that what the name of a person to do the final prediction that whether a person will survive or not? So basically what we are assuming here is that these two columns are not that much, that much usable means these two columns we are ignoring. So this is something discarded columns, which we are passing as a parameter. And then we are trying to sort this. Uh, you know, by the ID and deleting the columns. Second important thing is that we have seen that sex is something which is, a, you know, uh, having a male or female, which my model will not be able to understand. We have to convert this particular thing into some numeric form. So what we are saying that if a person will be female, uh, you know, indicate that as one, otherwise indicate that as zero. So once this pre-process will be done, the third important step is to build the classifier. Let it run, let it run. So in this way, our, you know, second step, second step is also done where we are trying to pre-process the data set. In pre-processing, what we usually did here, majorly we focus on two aspects. First aspect is, you know, uh, discarding of those columns, which we feel are not playing a, you know, a very useful role in order to do the predictions or in other words, I can say that those columns which are not correlated 
with respect to the output feature which we are predicting. Second thing which we are trying to do is trying to convert that sex which is male or female to 0 and 1 because our model will only understand the numeric data. Now once the, these two parts are done, we are trying to build a neural network classifier. Here you can see that we are passing a shape none comma 6. 6 indicates the number of features, none indicates our unde undefined dimensions which we don't know initially. Here we are trying to build a three layer neural network. Now you can you know increase or decrease those particular uh, layers according to your own wish and according to the accuracy that you are getting. But here as of now we are taking three layers. First layer will contain 32, 32 number of neurons, fully connected layer is there, second again 32. The last one because we will be having two classes, so either it will be 0 or 1. So it will contain two values, two number of neurons and the activation function is what we are using as softmax. Why softmax? Because we are trying to calculate the probability of a class 0 or class 1. So here if you will see uh, once finally our model is ready, we are trying to call a regression function on top of the, that neural network that we have created. And finally, we will define our model. This DNN indicates a deep neural network that we are trying to create here, right? And inside that, we are passing our, uh, you know, neural network classifier that we have just now built. After that, we are trying to fit our model. Now here you can, you can see that here we are passing number of epochs. Again, that is a number hyperparameter that you can change according to your own wish. For example, 10, 20, 30. Uh, there is a way to optimize that number of epochs as well, maybe by, a, by a, you know, uh, using a, a different, different kind of techniques are there, where with the help of which you will just keep on checking that what is the loss and what is the accuracy that you have. And at one point of time, when you feel that the accuracy is high and after increasing the number of epochs, it is going down. So at that point of time, you will completely stop that. So there is a complete different technique for that, that maybe I'll show you in the future videos. But as of now, this is something that we have where we are manually, manually writing the number of epochs. And you can see, you can see that at each and every time your training has started now. And you can see here that epoch number three. So at every epoch, you will be able to get some loss and some accuracy, right? Some loss, some accuracy. So this is the way uh, where we will be able to train our model and it is done. So you can see that here we will be able to get 80.70 as the accuracy and the loss is minimum. Now the model prediction. Now the last step is to predict our model where we are manually passing some values with respect to the Shivam and Priya which is a list of the data, data points that we have. We will call the preprocess function so that uh, you know it will be able to pre-process the data which we are passing here. Then we are simply calling the predict function where we are passing a list of the data points that we have. And you can clearly see, if I will just run this, you will be clearly able to see the surviving rate of Shivam and the surviving rate of Priya. So 82% chances are there to survive Priya, but 12.7% chances are there for the survival of Shivam. Basically, in this way, we will be, you know, able to get a training of a neural network classifier where basically we try to create a, in this particular video, three layer neural network as you can clearly see. Now here, these numbers you can, you know, keep on changing and try to see that at which particular number you will be able to get a higher accuracy and lower loss. So ultimate target of training the model is this only that we really want to have a higher accuracy and the lower loss value. After that, we will try to, you know, train our model and finally the predictions will be there. And that is what we have seen here. So in this way, the complete implementation of, I would say, uh, titanic survival uh, data set using TensorFlow is done. Here again, if you will see, uh, you know, TF learn is something which is quite amazing library with the help of which we can directly call the functions. I would highly recommend you guys to go and, you know, see the documentation of this particular library uh, because it's quite helpful. It's quite user friendly and you can clearly see, right, we will be easily able to create a deep neural network uh, model uh, on top of the neural network classifier that we have created. So with this, let's end this video. Uh, I hope that you guys will be able to understand the implementation part of each and every step that I have explained here. 
If you still have any sort of doubt, do let me know in the comment section. I'll for sure try to resolve it as soon as possible. With this, happy learning to all. Bye-bye everyone and I'll see you all in my next upcoming videos.